whodunit franchise surrounded by a whole new cast of characters. Blanc goes to the private island of tech billionaire Miles Braun for a murder mystery party where he intends to solve a real life crime he believes has been committed by someone at the party. The film co-stars Janelle Monet, Edward Norton, Catherine Hahn, Leslie Odom Jr., Kate Hudson, Dave Bautista, Jessica Henwick, and Madeline Klein. Movie has a rare r- matching Rotten Tomatoes score. Wow. Did you know this? No, I did not know. You seeing this? 93% from critics, 93% audience score. Uh, on I've seen this movie twice. On first watch, I thought as good, possibly even better than Knives Out. On second watch, I came down to earth a little bit and just think it is a great top of its genre, modern, like contemporarily speaking, top of its genre type of movie that's probably a little worse than Knives Out. Yeah, so I I think it's definitely worse than Knives Out, uh, but it is it holds its own it's a worthy worthy sequel um and it does some things better than knives out like i think some of the mystery elements in this are are better uh and like a little bit more interesting than than what happened in knives out the pacing's probably a little bit better in this one than in knives out ooh interesting and the, but like the big the big detractor for me is I think that the there's way less charm and the characters are way less interesting. Uh, I'm not crazy about the pacing in this movie, but it does set up the the thing with like bad pacing in movies, especially if it's a any sort of mystery, is the ending's going to be Fast and Furious, mm-hmm. and this is the worst movie I could possibly mention while saying that this is a good movie. Uh, don't worry, darling. You had the sense of like, well. At least something's going to happen at the end. Yeah. And this, as you are as you know it's going to unravel quickly, you're still enjoying the first half, which really takes up... Uh, like, I would say, like, the first half of this movie takes up two-thirds of the movie. The, yeah. The, there's yeah, a, yeah. There's a... Uh, there are a couple of big reveals, but... Uh, and I'll try to keep this mostly spoiler-free, maybe. Um, the first of the big reveals involving one of the characters happens... Maybe later than I would have it happen. Well, I would try to have it happen like so. Uh, that's that's not that's kind of like not what I mean by pacing. So maybe I'm I'm using pacing wrong. Like I I think that it keeps a good pace, but I I don't love the structure. Yeah, right. Of, so like of the, the pacing, way that it's like, arranged. That's the, a good way. The of movie it. moves very quickly, but I don't think that like I don't think that it's arranged in the way that would serve it best. Yeah. Um, I love that this movie isn't an homage to Knives Out. Correct. It's literally taking a character and putting them in a new situation, which doesn't sound particularly novel, but obviously the temptation is always there from studios, directors, filmmakers to say, this worked, let's do it again. And in so many ways, they did do it again. They took Benoit Blanc yeah. and put him with a bunch of terrible people and had him figure some shit out. But it's all new, terrible people, and... It's a completely different story, too. And, like, the mystery is not not super similar to what happened in the first one. Right, right. It's, it's, a, it's a very different set of circumstances, from setting to characters to sort of the way that this all unfolds. Um, I... I agree with you, and I also agree with Ryan Johnson, who agrees with you, because it came out this week that he said he did not want Knives Out in the title whatsoever, and the studio really forced it on him. Wow. So it's it's the, the technical title is Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. Correct. And he was like, I didn't want that. I wanted it completely separate from Knives Out, and I wanted it to be like two separate novels on a bookshelf that you wouldn't necessarily know were connected yeah you don't need to have seen knives out to see this movie i can't even think of any there's not like a single connection i don't think and if there is like maybe there are some fun uh, easter eggs but who cares you don't uh you don't need them there is more like self-contained easter eggs in this and this is um a this is solvable by 
the the viewer. Did you know who quote unquote did it as you were watching? Um, no. And here's the thing: I didn't really care. Yeah, <laughs> like I I I know that some people watch like murder mysteries to be like I want it. I'm gonna try to figure out who I'm the did it. Same exact it. way. I don't. They're I don't gonna really tell ca- us. I don't really care to beat somebody to the punch. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not. I I don't feel like I need to distract myself from what's going on on screen trying to figure it out myself. Maybe that's I, I'm I I know for a fact that that's a different experience for a lot of people. But like yeah, I didn't put a ton of brain power into being like, well, this thing that thing like I'm gonna find out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just I'm, tell it to me. <laughs> yeah, um, there as as you said uh, earlier on the podcast, there is a musical tie-in that can tip you off early on in the movie and not bragging just saying i'm a dork i picked up on it and then had my eye on the person who did it so it was interesting watch because i i never know who did these things or whatever so it was interesting on the first watch to be like oh i'm pretty sure it's this person and then being kind of rewarded with each small kernel the the rest of the way um it on a related but I'm actually maybe unrelated. Uh, no, I love what this movie does with stupid characters because stupid characters are tough to make and execute because if you make them too stupid, they either tank any interaction they're with or they just serve no real purpose. Like Joey Tribbiani really borders on like, all right, you got to get this guy off my screen because like at some point these guys got to get something done. Yeah. And this guy, I, that and you lose all humanity. Like yeah. they just become a caricature and you're like, there's no way that this person could actually exist and function. Another great example of that early episodes of new girl. Jess. Yeah. Jess. Just is, the stupidest person alive. I remember one of my friends tried watching the first season and he said he gave up on it because he was like the main character would die. Would d- die. That's <laughs> yeah. exactly what he said. He said they this person would be dead by now if they were actually this stupid. Uh, they have the Birdie J character, which is very overtly and uh, obnoxiously stupid. So that's that's what I mean by I don't I didn't like the characters as, as much because like they definitely seemed like they steered too far into like very very stupid. Like, but I think that helps to suppress uh, the. Otherwise, spoon-fed stupidity of Miles's character. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, there's one person who's really, really stupid. But as you're looking for things from everybody else, uh, you can pick up on like, oh, like Miles is definitely the second stupidest person here. But yeah, but I don't think, that and you, maybe even I stupidest. Don't, I don't think just a little more uh, like flamboyant. I don't think that like they needed the like to steer that far into stupidity with some of these other characters because Miles is still believable. Especially like it's very clear that Miles is, is has the inspiration for Miles is like a guy like Elon Musk. Yeah, he's who, con artist who is like very successful, very rich, but somehow seemingly extraordinarily stupid and reckless and like. You don't. I don't think that you need to steer so far into like stupidity with the other characters to make Miles believable or throw people off the scent of, or, or like potentially throw people off the scent of Miles because like we have a, a framework of knowing that that person can exist. This movie doesn't uh, help to quell my stop. Go five minutes without an eat the rich movie <laughs> challenge because this and probably. Every Knives Out movie might be like this. This one is going to age uh, a little bit more poorly than Knives Out with all the pandemic references and yeah. like the the Elon Musk nods. Like it, it definitely definitely is like a product of it's the time dated. more than Knives Out was. But that being said, it did have the best like timely visual gag of the year with the uh, birdie wears like a completely mesh face mask. That is just serves no purpose. I thought that was fucking hilarious. Uh, what would you give Knives Out or Glass Onion Knives Out? Uh, a, a fucking go Knives ahead. Out mystery okay, on Letterbox. Um, I gave it a four out of five. I thought it was a very fun time. Um, took issue with some things. Like again, I I think that the 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 characters not quite as interesting. The the structure of the movie. Took some issue with it, but really my biggest gripe with this was one of the tropes that they used it was just extremely overused. I would give it 
four and a half, or I gave it. I, I always feel I, I've already locked these things in by the time we but get here. I gave it four and a half on Letterboxd. You can change it later. I've done that before. 